Now you've been through the transition of having the uh, the changing of the guard, so to speak. Yeah. Can you explain as a new guy who's looking to do good things to to be that hungry officer? What does a more I say seasoned because seasoned to that team come in with a negative attitude towards things? How does that how does that affect new well, new officers? So, I mean, even if you look at my trainers, right? I told my trainers, like, hey, I want to go down to that that area. I want to work there. And some of them are like, oh, just because you said that, I'm not even going to pass you. They were joking. Right. But, like, that just shows you the stigma of the area. Like, oh, I, if I knew you wanted to go down there, I wouldn't even have passed you through. Right. Like, I literally had a, a trainer tell me that. Yeah. And then I had another trainer be like, hey, you're one of the, the best uh, rookies that I've had. And I think you can do great police work. Please don't waste it by going down there. Yeah. Do not waste how good of a patrol officer you could be yep. by going down there. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, cause I know what I can do down there. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of people who kind of are down on the area are like, they would actually really love it because they want to be proactive. They want to have fun. Yeah. They just don't realize yeah. like until they're, you're down there and you yeah. actually work on the team, they don't realize what we do. Yeah. And they think, it's like it used to be like a couple of years ago where you just sit in a car, sit on a sheet and don't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, we work constantly. We're always, we're proactive. We take calls. We like, we do the work Yep. and it's clear by the stats we have. But yeah, I've literally had trainers be like, yeah. don't waste your potential. Like you could be an amazing officer and jokingly they're like, oh, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Like whatever, whatever. And they're joking. Like yeah. I'm so close with them. And they're like, no, if you really want to be down there, like I'm happy you're going down there because it's what you want. But yeah. like, please don't be there for long. Come back to patrol and be a real officer soon. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like, still digging at me. Yeah. I don't even have sergeants. I had a sergeant the other day when I was at dinner was like, hey, when are you going to come uh, be on my team and be a real officer? Oh, jeez. You know, because because they know that I'm a hard worker. And, yeah. they, and they're like, no, nah, I'm just messing with you. I was like, you know, I take calls like in your area and I help yeah. you guys out. And he's like, I know you do. Like, we appreciate your help. Yeah. But they're always going to dig at you. Like, I try to, even me, admittedly, when... Looking back, I remember thinking, like, God, that would suck to be... Because they were they were putting whole rookie teams. They were coming fresh out of the academy, and they were yep. putting them to that to that team. And I'm like, man, they're really doing them a disservice. They're not getting the full uh, uh, patrol experience. And there may be some aspects that they're not getting as often, but the amount of police work they have to do, I think, Kind of makes up for makes up for that yeah. it just in general because you may have a beat and you take you know five six calls that night but how many calls that don't even turn into calls do you do you deal with yeah not to mention the calls that you get um, and there are usually clusters there usually yep. there's a lot more a lot. going on yeah um, and a lot of in progress stuff. Like, oh, yeah. like you actually see, like we just had the shooting the other day, like yep. happened right next right. to us. Like yep. that doesn't happen very often in patrol. It happens to us all the time. Yeah, but it happens to patrol, us on the regular. Very, well, this happened 10 minutes ago. We're going to respond. Right. Us, it happens right in front of us. Right. And, and it, yeah. Yeah. It's chaotic. So m with me looking at it, um, I, my perspective changed, uh, the more I got to know about this is before I even became a supervisor down there. Yeah. Um, I was looking to help our real time crime center and figure out ways to cover. And like, I wanted to see it firsthand. So I went yeah. down there one night, um, with uh, buck Wheeler, shout out to buck. And, yeah. uh, we, we walked it the whole shift. We were oh, out yeah. there and we stayed out there the whole shift. And, um, um, it was like shortly after a shooting had happened at, okay. uh, the, the one that got changed from varsity to go. Oh, yeah. So we were out in that area and just trying to get a feel for it. And I was like, holy shit. Like you got gang members, you've got everything, drug there, deals man. going on everywhere. You've got, I mean, just everything. Half the people have guns. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because it, it takes all the fun things from patrol and, and just can condenses it into this it. one. Yeah. You know, what is it like five by eight blocks or yeah. some, something like that. Um, yeah. And so you do, you get a taste of everything. If you want to be a dope chasing officer and learn the narcotics room, you got that. If you want to yeah. learn how to deal with gang members, you've got that. Um, you can still go take calls too. Yeah. yeah, And you can still go take calls. And, and I love that. Yeah. I can go take calls. You know, I, 
I get to go take calls for a few hours. Yeah. You know, get my patrol experience and then come down and handle what we handle. Yeah. And it's, it's great because it's, yeah. I'm not just 10, eight, take calls for nine and a half hours, punch out, go home. Yeah. I get like a little, a little different, you know, I get a little yeah. proactivity, taking calls, dealing yeah. with fights. It's, it's nice to have yeah. a little change up. So one of the things we can explain to people listening, the dynamic between patrol and then the, the team that you're on, they're slightly different. We're still under the umbrella of patrol. Yep. However, we have specialized requirements. Yep. So we, it, we're in t- basically on 24 emergency callback if there is a protest. Yep. Um, we're a mobile field force on bicycles um, <laughs> out there, new boot goofing. Uh, <laughs> so, so we have that dynamic. Um, we have to train more than most because we have to be up to speed yep. on on the mobile field force stuff. We're we're in hand to hand stuff a lot more. We're dealing oh, with yeah. fights uh, every night, pretty much. Every I mean, night, every we're, busy night we have Friday, Saturdays, right? Sundays. So to prevent uses of force basically preventing uses of force, we do a lot of grappling training and, and, yep. and having stuff. to ground people. And whatever. yes. So we, we've got to do that stuff every day. Regular patrol doesn't get to do that. So it creates a natural animosity. Yeah. I mean, just naturally, if I was in patrol and I heard like these guys are, we're the same, we're the same people, but they don't go answer calls after a certain time of night. Yeah. And they get to go do all this training. So when I get to work, I got to go to, to roll call, you know, 15 minute roll call. Maybe if I have a cool sergeant, he'll extend the roll call out a little bit, a, yeah. a half hour and we'll have a little fun. But then I got to go punch 10, eight and I got to go shag calls Nine and, a half and, hours. and these guys don't. Yeah. That's bullshit. And they're not wrong. It sucks. But, but they also don't want to be down there. They also don't want to be down. They there. come down there and they work down there and they're like, oh, I don't know how you do it. Yeah. I, they always say, I don't know how you guys de- deal with this. Right. I don't know how you guys do this every night. Yeah. So, and it's like, so. Exactly. So which my, is it, you know? Yeah. 